when that's all you dedicate your channel to is putting my name in the title, name dropping me, putting my name in titles for views with no proof of anything. I mean, accusing me of things. That's your whole channel drama using my name for views. I mean, at that point, that's just pathetic. YouTubers who dedicate their whole entire channel to drama, talking about other people for views and clicks, name dropping them because they know they will never get views on anything that's just themselves. It's just clout chasing at the end of the day, man. Introducing <laughs> Bast TV. Introducing <laughs> Bast TV. Welcome to our uh, podcast show, guys. Uh, today I'm with Eric Konevsky. Yeah, so I'm just sitting here at my home in Austin on my couch trying to relax. So this guy comes here. Yeah, I'm announced, <laughs> brings all this shit, sets it up. I'm a, <laughs> really, he's gonna interview I'm me. I'm gonna show now. you what kind of set we just built in our uh, in our room, in my room. Well, it's technically my room because I've been sleeping here for the past past couple days. Okay. Uh, I'm in Austin, Texas, not in Los Angeles no more. Uh, I came here because I wanted to film with Eric a couple prank videos. So, uh, so you can confirm I have furniture now, because that's one of the things that Cassidy called me out on when he made his call out video that I don't have furniture. Actually, I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show every time you point it out. It's oh, supposed yeah. coffee. It's supposed to be coffee. But uh, yeah, we've been filming all day, so we're a little <laughs> tight. This is literally the best setup we could build out of everything we have. Table, couch, couple cameras, and that's it. Of course, the most expensive microphone that I bought a couple months ago. All the budget went towards the microphone. So as always, man. Options. As always. So the well, reason is couch. Let's not get into how much the couch costs. How much the couch costs? Seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred for this? Yeah. I could have gotten an offer up for. Actually, that. no. I think it's five hundred. No, no, no. This one's thirteen hundred. <laughs> the, uh, the bed frame is seventeen hundred. Do you want to start like two real questions, or do you want to like talk about couches and like, no, I, set up? Uh, let's talk about how much everything costs, because Cassidy said I like talking about that. So how much does pillow cost? This pillow, they came with the couch, so they were technically free. Uh, this bottle, I bought a case of 40 for uh, 2 dollars in Costco, mm -hmm. which is great because here in Texas, you don't have to pay the five cent fee for the plastic. You don't? You don't. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. You don't have to pay for the bags either. <coughs> uh, this one came in a pack of four, I believe it was five forty nine. Well, right now you're giving a promotion to Rockstar, which they've never paid you anything, so you probably want to turn it the other way. So you want to keep your Rockstar? This bottle is like bugging me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this one was uh, one dollar each at Walmart. Okay. But that blanket right there, fifteen dollars. Guys, for those who don't know, it's already at twelve <laughs> twenty-two right now. My <laughs> eyes are fucking closed. Yeah, we're mine fucking, too. We're fucking doing podcasts at twelve a.m. in the morning. The reason we're actually doing this podcast is because Eric, for the past few months, been talking about Cassidy. We've been talking about all these small situations that's been, been happening in his life. Well. Uh, I've been talking let me, about. Let me finish it. Let me finish it, okay? Dude? I thought the interview was with me. Yeah, I know, I know. But let me finish. I'm the guest here. <laughs> you're I the guest in your own house? You're the guest <laughs> in my house, so you, it's my rules. So. <laughs> <laughs> so why am I here? You just want to talk to the audience like this? I don't know, you broke the room for all this shit. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so I talk to Basque about Cassidy all the time, my personal issues, and uh, Basque is like, why don't you make a podcast talking about this? For real, every time we meet up, like, he talks about Cassidy, he talks about all these uh, things that's happening, you know, and I, I just tell him, like, you know, instead of telling me and telling people people around you, you gotta, like, make a podcast, like, kind of express your emotions on camera, which is the best way to, you know, to, to speak out, you know? Yeah, and because I nobody else hears whatever he t tells me. I, I pretty much convince him, like, let's make this podcast you can tell people you know, what are you thinking so there are a few people that telling you stop worrying about Cassidy move on like stop filming videos about him just forget about all this drama it's been going on for a year now well so what actually, do you, what been, you guys tell them like, it's been you, going on well it's been going on for five years behind the scenes but I know it's really bugging you that people tell you this because it's actually oh that affects your salary affects your whole life well, it, exactly. So uh, somebody made a good analogy in the comments recently that what Cassidy and Bruno and Alex are doing is the equivalent of getting a bulldozer and just bulldozing somebody's brick and mortar business, you know, just bulldozing somebody's liquor store or smoke shop, grocery store, whatever, and getting no repercussions for it. So if let's say you owned a fucking laundromat for nine years and somebody just came and bulldozed it. 
Would you tell that person to just move on? For that person, that was probably that's that's just the business. You know, that's just a source of income. For me, YouTube isn't just a source of income. Uh, to me, YouTube is my life, as you know. Like, this is what I love doing. So you're gonna be, you think about. you're gonna be doing YouTube when you're like 45, 50 years old? Um, or I, YouTube doesn't exist no more. I don't think I will be doing YouTube when I'm 45, when I'm 50. Um, I didn't think I would be doing YouTube right now. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a pro wrestler. That I was passionate about bodybuilding, but right now this is what I'm most passionate about. You also a little bit that Cassidy told you that you're a talent and you don't know how to act. Remember, like a year ago. Uh, well, he said uh, in his response video that I don't know how to talk, which is hilarious <clears throat> because I completely destroyed him and his whole team by myself by just talking. Right? I didn't actually go and like beat the shit out of anybody. <clears throat> not yet. I just, uh, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just made them all look like fools simply by talking and as far as Cassidy saying I'm untalented well it's very interesting coming from somebody who's been filming the same exact video a hundred times over and over like Cassidy that's the difference between me and Cassidy Cassidy just does this because he needs the money this is his way to avoid working a regular nine-to-five job to me I'm passionate about the shit I do I'm always trying to come up with new shit Always trying to come to reinvent myself, make new characters, new video ideas. Cassidy literally just films the same video over and over and over, just talking to people. He goes out for 45 minutes, just films it, doesn't even edit it, just puts the fucking raw footage. If we don't talk about this, the way he's filming, his style is his own thing, right? Right now, we're kind of focusing on this people that are telling you, stop filming, stop worrying about But, but you Cassidy. brought up Cassidy saying that I'm untalented, so <laughs> I was answering that question. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So which question do you want me to answer? I want to answer the question, like, what do you tell to people that are telling you, stop worrying about Cassidy, move on? Like, so is it actually something that really is like bugging you to this day that oh, yeah, until yeah, you yeah. finish this series you're not gonna stop? What's your uh, ultimate goal about casting? Well, hold on, I, I was <laughs> you keep throwing me off. Let's talk about the people who say move on. All right, people say that like oh Cassidy doesn't mention you. Why do you mention him? Cassidy doesn't not mention me because he's so mature and he doesn't think about this and this isn't affecting him. I mean, he tried to respond the day after I posted my initial video. Remember, he posted a response, right? Yeah. And what did he do? He deleted it right away because it got all dislikes. Then remember, he tried to make a video exposing me and John by chopping up audio recordings of John that he had that he recorded like a little weasel. He thought that was going to expose us and then what happened he didn't know that i had the recording where john makes him cry on the phone and then after i posted that sammy his camera guy was begging me to take that down saying he would take down his video too so it's not that cassidy is so mature that's why he doesn't talk about this there's just nothing he can say because anytime he mentions me it just brings attention to me it brings attention to the whole situation the only reason that anybody still watches Cassidy is because they don't know about all of this. The people that watch Cassidy are the people that don't know about any of this. And he's been like Hitler. He's been patrolling his comment sections, deleting every single comment about this. He's trying so, so hard to run away from this, to weasel his way out of this. And like I said at the very start, I'm not going to let him weasel his way out of this. It's a fucking war, and you see it is a fucking war now with the fucking Instagrams, the Patreons. Well, guess well I, know, I know that we're going to get to that. I wrote the questions, but... <laughs> But you, you see what they're doing behind the scenes, right? Like, they're clearly not over this. They haven't moved on. They just can't say shit publicly because, you know, well, Cassidy can. Alex and Bruno, you know, they're nobodies. But Cassidy is afraid to mention me because anytime he mentions me, that just brings more attention to the situation. And people can see who's right and who's wrong. I was telling you a few days ago, I'm like, why would Cassidy remove all the videos from, from YouTube if he knew that he wasn't wrong? Right. The so, okay, exactly. That's a good point, Bass. Let's say that... Cassidy's video did bring attention to me, right? So what does Cassidy say? That I'm untalented, my videos aren't funny, I'm not good. If I'm not funny and I'm not talented, what good does bringing fans to me do? Like me and Cassidy always talked about this. The reason why he can share people like Bruno and you know, they won't get anything out of it is because Bruno sucks. He has no good content. The reason I got new followers when Cassidy would mention me is because my content is actually good. They see the content, they actually stick around. So first of all, if my content isn't funny, then why is Cassidy afraid to mention me? I won't get any new subscribers from it anyway, right? And secondly, even if I did have good content, but he could just prove that I'm this, you know, he could prove that I'm a scumbag, that everything I'm saying is a lie, that I just made everything about him up. Why wouldn't he do that? Why wouldn't he do that just to clear his name? He only does it in lives, and then he delists them right after that, which kind of sketchy as fuck, you know? No, but he doesn't, he doesn't disprove anything in the lives. He, he just, doesn't just... 
he, he just calls us irrelevant yeah, and all that. Yeah, you know? he calls like fake pranksters. He talks shit about you sometimes. And, but yeah, he, he doesn't actually make a whole video about this where he can actually prove people. Oh, you know why Eric is wrong? That's because why. But he you tried know? to bask. He tried to multiple times. But it's just such a pathetic little attempt. That he has to delete it right away, he has no choice because it's just so bad. People can see right through it. Like literally, his responses help me more than they help him. They show people that what I'm saying is true. They show people what a fucking piece of shit he is. But what about this creepy cock series that you've been doing? You already done four episodes, right? Yeah. Pretty much parody of Cassidy Campbell. Oh, so that that's another thing I want to talk about. I, I forgot that was going to be part of the first uh, question. So recently on a live, I'll send you the clip. Maybe you can pop it in here if you want. Cassidy said that I'm copying him by doing the creepy cock series. People will use your name as clickbait for views because Look, they're nobody, they have nothing to offer, they have no original ideas. That's just how it is, man, it's YouTube, buddy. I'm, I'm copying his characters, I'm unoriginal, that's why I'm doing it, which is funny to me because he did a parody of me first. The thing is, Cassidy is just not, he doesn't have the patience to sit there and put the work in that I do. He's not creative enough to write a script like I do. So his parody, you'll put a picture of it up and on, you know what I'm talking about, the pedophile video? Yeah. It, it was just bad, like it, it wasn't funny, like it, it was just poorly written and it was filmed in 10 minutes. Like it was just complete shit. What I didn't like about that is, I thought it was in poor taste that Cassidy would upload that right after my channel got removed. So at a certain point after uh, a couple of weeks went by when John was still cool with Cassidy and Bruno and Cassidy were visiting John in Arizona, which, I'm pissed that John didn't just fuck them both up when he had them right in front of him. I'm sure he regrets that now as well. John called me and he tried to make peace with me and Cassidy on the phone, right? He tried to put me and Cassidy on the phone together. I asked Cassidy, you know, like, what's up with asperity? And he tells me, oh, it's funny. It's like Saturday Night Live. It's a parody. What, have you never seen a parody before? That was recently? No, that was back when he made the parody of me. Oh, okay. Before I started the Creepy Cuck series. So when he does... Complete nonsense. That's just a funny parody. But when I do a legit funny parody that everybody likes, you know, that's copying him. That's, um, you know, just just uh, uncreative, whatever, like fucking hypocrite that Cassidy is. But yeah, the Creepy Cook series, uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that. And at this point, it's going to be a 10 episode series. But yeah, like I literally have the whole thing planned out already. You're going to be in the next episode, episode five. Yeah, which I'm actually a surprise. I'm going to play myself, right? As far as I know. Well, I told you what I'm going to do. It makes full sense, right? Yeah, for those who don't know, I called out Cassidy Campbell a few months ago and he never replied to me. The only thing he replied to me is in the comment that he's going to call the police on me. Cassidy doesn't want to take my channel. And then you replied to him on his own channel and your comment got way more likes than Oh, yes. Yeah. And one thing mm -hmm. is he did block my YouTube channel because every time I leave comments under, under his videos, he never gets any likes. Never oh, yeah. He, he blocks anybody who mentions me in any sort of way. As far as the Creepy Cuck series, I've been having so much fun with that. One of the reasons is, like, one of the only good things that's come out of this whole Cassidy drama is that I met that whole group of people that I'm working with now. Um, Tanner, the guy who plays Alex. Andrew, the guy who plays Bruno. Hugo, the guy who plays Semi. Camera guy Mike, obviously shout out to him. When this is all said and done, the plan is for all for us to all be living in the same city, have a content house together. I know Tanner's all in. I don't know how 100% about Hugo and Andrew, but I just, I know if they are, they have the potential to all be fucking huge on YouTube. They're an incredibly talented group of people. Uh, it's super fun working with them. And it's just amazing, like, we literally have like the perfect crew for this because every time I've worked with anybody in the past, like a camera guy, whatever, I've introduced a new character in my videos, whatever, like they always balance after a few videos because you know, like the shit I do, it's crazy shit. It's not for everybody. It requires a lot of work too. People don't realize how much work goes into it. When they see how much work it is, they're like, oh shit, I don't want any part in this. But Hugo and Andrew and uh, Tanner and Mike, like they've all been as dedicated to the series as I have. And we all get along together so well behind the scenes like I never would have imagined especially after the Arizona trip where we filmed the spoiled rich kid that's when I really realized like we have something good here and um, that's one of the only good things that's uh, that I can say has come out of uh, losing my channel that I met all of those people and uh, like now I have a whole fucking crew of people that I'm working with and I love working with them all like it's great recently your patreon and your Instagram account were removed along with John Bravo so within like within like one week so right? listen to this Alex, the fat pig, makes a Patreon account. 
Mm -hmm. Like the same day John's Patreon goes down. Meanwhile, we've had it for like a year until now. About a few days later, mine goes down. W what a fucking coincidence, dude. So, first Alex's Patreon, Patreon went down. Wait. No, first Alex makes a Patreon for the first, first Alex time Alex makes ever. a Patreon. And right. then, right after that, or the next, same day, right? Same day? I think, like, I, I might have the timeline wrong, but let's say within a week, Alex makes a Patreon, John's and mine go down. I don't know, is that a coincidence? You tell me. Like, how do these coincidences just always happen with these people? Like but Alex makes mine from Patreon? He's probably not going to because it'll probably go down. Who's gonna watch him? I mean, people are gonna report it just like he reported ours, like, same with his YouTube. So before. how do you think he, they remove your, uh, your Patreon page? That's kind of like... I don't know about the Patreon, but the Instagram, I know for a fact, they botted it repeatedly because John pretty much found the software that they used to do it. Do you know the name of the software? Oh, I don't, and if I did, I obviously wouldn't say it. So what, <laughs> what's the funny part is I remember you woke up one day. That was like a week and a half ago. I go on his page, and there's no Eric's page. And yeah, and my Instagram Bravo's page, there's no John Brown's Yeah, so <laughs> I woke up, I see that I don't have an Instagram, and then I check my text messages, and John is like, you won't believe this, my fucking Instagram went down, these fucking pieces of shit, blah, blah, blah. Like, he didn't even know that mine went down, too. His just went down at the same exact yeah, time as John, mine. John called me. He's like, you won't fucking believe it. My Instagram just is down. So, and you know what? You know, you remember Cassidy's went down the same day, too? Yeah. So that little fucking weasel, he he went and disabled his the same day. Just to show people that. Just to show people that it's not him. So they can But he's him. such a fucking little attention whore that he couldn't wait a week or a month to make it seem realistic. He had to just go and bring it back the next day because he can't handle it being down. It's impossible to have your Instagram come back within 24 hours if it's actually disabled. John believes that Bruno is the main person behind uh, having the Instagram go down because um, Bruno's the one who knows how to do the shit. He's a basically like, I don't know if you could call him a professional troll because a professional makes money. That's his biggest hobby, just sitting online and trolling people with fake accounts. Apparently something in episode three, Bruno got really offended by in the Spoiled Rich Kid video that we did, which I don't understand because Andrew, the guy who plays him, number one, makes him look like a badass, the way he acts in the pranks, because Bruno's a fucking little bitch. He doesn't have the balls that the Bruno actor does. Number two, Andrew's way better looking. Bruno looks like a fucking rat. So if anything, we're making Bruno look fucking good. Like, I don't know what his fucking problem is. And that's the funniest part. These little bitches, these three little bitches, Bruno, Alex, and Cassidy, they did a parody about me first. And it wasn't even funny. And they're trying to say, oh, it's just a funny parody. <laughs> but then, now we fuck them up with our parody. Well, actually, Bruno and Alex and all these people, we make them look better. Look at Tanner and look at Alex. Like, we're making them actually look fucking good. But they're so butthurt about it, they just can't deal with it. They don't know what to do now. Like, ask every single time I upload an episode. Like, they try to do some shit. Like, the first episode, Cassidy fucking, um, he released that video with the John Bravo phone call. Uh, the second episode, uh, Alex started posting mug shots of John. Like, he started freaking out that we got an actor to play him. The third episode, they do the shit with our Instagrams. Like, they can't handle the shit. They're so butthurt about it and it's literally just like a funny parody like Cassidy said you know if you can't take it don't dish it out <laughs> if you can't handle people making parodies about you if you don't want somebody making a 10 episode series about you in the future showing what a little bitch you are then don't make parodies of other people right yeah Alex recently uh, called you out for a MMA fight, and you, I know you recently went to his house to film a video, right? Yeah, so uh, the whole thing with Alex is just uh, ridiculous. Alex is the biggest, literally the biggest pussy on their whole fucking squad, but he's probably the biggest pussy I've ever met in general. The whole time I knew, I just remembered after going to his house, and he didn't even answer the door. That was a couple of weeks ago, right? That was about a week ago. A week ago. That was, um... So you drove to Dallas? To Houston. To Houston. You, you drove to Houston with who? Tanner? Tanner and Mike. You knocked on the door. What time was it when you knocked on the door? It was about 2 a.m. You didn't think he wasn't home? He was home. He said, uh, look, I can show you right now. Eric pulled up to your house the other day. Why did you hide? Uh, when you come at 2 a.m. with three people, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> right? How does not fair? Like, he, he probably got scared. Like, he, he did get scared. We heard him inside. And it's hard to not hear him because he fucking walks with this fucking 400 fat piece of shit. 400 pound <laughs> fat piece of shit. It's just funny what a little fucking pussy Alex is. Like, the whole time I knew him, every time he had a, an issue with me, like, he would never ever say it to my face. He would go behind my back 
and start issues with Cassidy. When he had a problem with having to drive to pick me up from the airport, me making a hole in his wall, whatever bullshit he came up with. There was even one time where I was on a three-way call with John and I couldn't believe it until I heard this myself. I heard Cassidy telling John that Alex told all these things to him. So I see Alex in person. I'm like, hey, Alex, do me and you have a problem? He's like, oh, no, 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 everything's good. And then the next day he goes again and cries to Cassidy. So he's a little fucking pussy. He would never do anything to my face. Him calling me out for an MMA fight? Like, just stop it. You know what? You want an MMA fight? I accept, Alex. Set it up. Fucking set it up. Pay for a referee for a ring. I'm sure your fucking cheap ass is gonna pay for it. Set it up. Or even better, like I keep saying, come to my fucking house anytime. I'll beat the shit out of you gladly. Come with three people at 2 a.m. I'll fuck you all up. I and don't then, give a shit. And then instead what he told you, you gotta you gotta get off your steroids and No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me he wants to get drug tested. Like, what world does he live in if you have an issue with somebody? So let's say he was at a bar and he was with his girl and I'm on steroids and I slap his girl's ass. What is he gonna say? Oh shit, that guy's on steroids, you know. <laughs> this isn't fair. Like, I can't protect you, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't protect you. Sorry, he's on steroids. And I mean, he's six foot four. I don't tell him to get surgery to, you know, shrink his uh, reach, you know? He has his advantages, whatever. I have my, like, we are who we are. Like, if, if you have a problem with me and you want to fight, then let's fight. If you don't want to fight, then stop bluffing and calling me out because, you know, I'll beat the shit out of you. Like, realistically, what the fuck, Alex? One you look pussy. If you're going to fight Alex, are you going to use your legs or are you only going to do the boxing style? Like, are you going to kick, use kicks? If I fight Alex, there's no fucking rules. In the real world, like when somebody has a problem, like I do with Alex, there's no fucking rules, Alex. In a street fight, there's no fucking rules. And the thing is, first of all, a couple funny things about me going to Alex's house. First of all, why did you go, first of all? I told him in advance that I would come. He wasn't alive. And I told him, hey, Alex, are you going to be home? on Thursday. Are you going to be in Houston? He said yes. He's like, oh, now it's a threat. He's like, but if you show up, then I guess it's going to go down. I'm like, you know? And then I show up and he fucking hides inside, doesn't even open the door. And he tries to say that, oh, it's because it's three people. Hey, you got to give him props, he didn't call the cops, right? Yeah, I'm surprised about that. What would the police do? Because he told me I'm, I can come. No, he told me I can come. If he told me you're not welcome to show up at my house, that's a different story. But let's put it this way. I didn't come there that day to fight Alex. I actually came there to ask him a question on camera that would have fucked him up in person if I asked him and I'm not going to say what it is. Obviously, I was with my camera guy. I came there to film a fucking video. If he wanted to fight me, I would beat his ass, sure, but I didn't come there to fight him. If I came alone with no cameras, that's when you should be scared, Alex. Not when I come with my fucking filming crew. But he didn't know you came with a filming crew, did he? He knows who fucking Mike is. He knows that Tanner is... So he knew that they are going to come with you. Well, he said that I'm probably going to bring my goons. Well, Tanner is a gun, right? He's been to jail, what, nine times already? Uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> if he talks about that, but... It's just so funny to me how Bruno, he's literally... I've never met him, but John says that he's literally like the character that uh, it's, is in my videos. He literally... Just sits quietly on his laptop or on his phone in person like a little mouse, won't say a fucking word. Then as soon as he goes home, he's in Canada, he's far away, he's fucking protected on the internet. That's when he starts doing his shit. Fucking Cassidy too, would never say a fucking word to my face. I can't wait until the day I see Cassidy in person. All they can do is troll on the internet. At least, you know, I, I'm not scared to fucking answer my door, you know? Calling John right now, guys. John Bravo. Mr. Wellington is on the line. Hello? Hello, John. Hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Listen, I'm smoking weed, so I might be a little fucked up right now. You're smoking weed? Of course, but nighttime, right before, I, right before I go to bed, I gotta smoke it, so I have good dreams. Dude, you just nighttime. gave Alex more material, so you get plastic surgeries and you smoke weed? Like, dude. Oh, yeah, I get plastic surgeries when shit breaks or gets fucked up. Like, you're supposed to be. You know what the funny part is? Cassidy now, his nose is fucked up. It's growing more and more because he's lying. So he's gonna need plastic surgery to fix it. I wanna Dude, see now. What is up with his nose? It just keeps getting bigger and bigger in every video. You know what I think happened? He had that TV and septum surgery and then the idiot doesn't listen to me. I told him don't go boxing after. He kept on going boxing and sparring and having people and it, the face. And it's and like he John. A lot. Listen, he starts <laughs> lying a lot like an asshole. So now it's growing like Pinocchio. And now he's gonna need plastic surgery. Let's see if Alex is gonna fucking make fun of him. Yeah, but John, like the 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 boxing, like he's not fooling anybody. We all know he's like a little nerd. Like he's not intimidating anybody with his boxing. Like he can't hide who he really is. So like, well, why is he even bothering? You know. I, I think he retired after that last fight today. Well, I think he's retired now because he knows any fight he tries to set up, we're basically gonna go and fuck it up, tear the ring down. So I hope he's smart enough not to host another fight. 
But and if he does host another fight, the only reason, the only way we won't tear the ring down is if it's against Basque or against me. He would never do it. Yeah, because he's a little fucking bitch. He only beats up fights opponents who. Listen, all of them are bitches. Bruno was a pussy in front of me, face this. Yeah, I was just talking about that. Wouldn't say a fucking word to me. He's telling me I'm sorry, John, for what I did to you two years ago. And then as soon as he's back home in Canada, like a little bitch. Goes and does and the same shit. Starts up his fucking little rat ass, fucking pussy ass bullshit again on me. Okay, and then the other pussy, Alex, you show up to his house. What does he do? It's like, oh, it's not fair. It's two a.m. Yeah, it's not fair. You brought other people with you. Like, what's what's? There's nothing fair about. Oh, like, what's fair about our uh, mass reporting somebody's channel? Like, if you want to take shit to this level, like, it's the shit's not going to be fair, you know. Listen, the motherfucker, okay? All three of them, they fucked with our Patreon. Now they, they fucked with our same week. They fucked with our Instagram the same day. The piece of shit Cassidy goes, has the balls, call himself Christian. The same day our Instagrams go down, he goes and posts a fucking fake screenshot saying his account got disabled too. Why? To make it look like he didn't fucking have part in what happened to us. And then, magically, Within 24 hours, his count is back. Yeah. Like, oh, I was just talking happened. about that, like... Oh, you were telling yeah. me, right? Little attention whore, he can't stay off Instagram, so he can't even make it look real. If he really, that's the thing. If he wanted to make it look real, at least leave it off for a week. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. At least for a week, but no. He couldn't even handle it for less than 24 hours, a little bitch. He's a fucking little bitch. What are you going to do if you ever see Cassidy in person? Honestly? Yeah. I don't want to fucking ever have to see Oh, well, no, you want it. If there's a fitness expo or something, you already know. You want to see him. Honestly, if I see the guy in front of me, I'm not going to beat this shit out of him. I'm not going to break his nose, break his balls. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to slap him like his fucking stepfather used to do. Oh. I'm going to slap him once on the right, once on the left. <laughs> And make him feel that fucking smack and get PTSD on his ass. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm gonna pull out my belt too if I ever see him. <laughs> Wait, what about me, guys? Like, I feel like I'm just left alone here. Like, I kind of. What do you think about? No, let's all get belts and just start. Speaking I'm the one who called him out essentially, but the thing is, like, I don't have personal issues with him. I've been saying that for many times. Oh, um, I'm, I'm gonna touch on that after. I would hang only up. fight him if he said yes. Let's fight, you know, yeah. but I know he won't say yes because, you know, you know, he's scared of me or something. But even I'm not a professional fighter, uh, but like Why I say, fight every day, every time. Well, we I fight with people, but <laughs> you start a fight with somebody. <laughs> the point is, like, I don't have personal issues with him. And you got to understand because I don't I'm not into that drama. The only way I got into that drama Just is because, your Instagram or is because like we're friends and I'm, try I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to be on your side, obviously. Yeah. If I saw Cassidy personally, I would ask him, why wouldn't you reply to me? You know, why wouldn't you, you say that? as soon as you challenged him. He moved to fucking Florida. Went down between us. A week later, the motherfucker, he ended his lease, terminated his lease early, so that means he had to pay a fee. Packed up his house, shipped his cars and his belongings to Florida. A week later after that, because he was so scared you're gonna fucking show up. And I will, eventually, <laughs> when he moves to Dallas. I will. I'm not kidding. Like, as soon as I know his address, we're gonna fucking show up. <laughs> yeah. Now the funny part is, he was in Florida, now he's crying, saying it's shitty, I don't like it. And now he, he's coming back to Texas again. Cassidy. Yeah, yeah but, but John. Now. John, you know yeah. from the start he didn't want to move to Florida. He just he just was that much of a pussy. He felt he had to. He went there because he said, you know what? Let me get away from them. Let it cool down. Let it handle it, and then I'll come back. Whatever the case may be. But the point is, he moved that fast for one reason and one reason only because he was scared. And now the worst thing in decision he's doing, he's buying a house in Texas. That means. We don't know nothing about this, but if his address or some shit, if the trolls leak it out, because he's got trolls. What is he gonna fucking do? He's gonna crush. And if he bought the house, it's not like he can leave. Well, I know for sure he's gonna move into the area where the cops come in like within, within two minutes. So I'm pretty sure if we're gonna show up, he's gonna call the cops right away. 100%, no doubt. Did you guys see uh, Eric sent me like this uh, video that Brittany put up of him in the car? Yeah. And the comment section was so funny. And one, there was one thing that I, I noticed that was telling, okay? Yeah. You remember she said, 
oh, somebody had rolled oh man, it's a girl, how's cast sitting in field day? And then she said something to the point of, he needs to learn how to respect a woman so it'll be good for him. Yeah. Did you guys talk about that? No, no, we haven't talked about that, but man, I feel bad for that fucking little girl. First of all, naming a girl heaven. And then, <laughs> on top of the fact that she's gonna look like half Britney, half Cassidy, like, that's fucked up, man. Like, she's gonna get fucking bullied. <laughs> There's gonna be some Asian short girl with a giant nose named Heaven? Like, come on, man. <laughs> you can't do that. Can. Get a fucking abortion. I can't. <laughs> I can, because there's no going too low with this piece of shit. He sends my fucking mom death threats. You know, fuck him, fuck his unborn child, and fuck Britney. You see, Eric, you know, that's the thing. That and praise his stepdad. His stepdad's the only the person associated with him. Okay, you know, this is an important point. Okay, so many people. Not so many people. I say every once in a while people come like, you know, you guys need to move on. It's bullshit. You're like, you guys are acting like kids. Why do you care so much? Listen, if it was your, basically, this is our lives and our careers. If That's what I said, uh, John. It, it, it's literally not just a source of income for us. Like, this is our life. And our career, yeah. Yeah, so like, it's not the equivalent of somebody losing a shitty job because they can find a new job. Like, this is everything exactly. to us. I don't think people who are commenting that understand the magnitude of shutting down our Patreon, shutting down our Instagram, shutting off, uh, preventing us from doing our business and doing our work, you know? They don't understand the magnitude of it. That's the shit that pisses me off. So the reason why you're doing this podcast talking about it, the reason why you're doing all those videos, right? Yeah. Why? is because you want to make sure that this motherfucker gets his for doing what he did to us. And, you're, and, and you know what? That's what you're focused on, as well as doing your other things. Yeah. And listen, and for me, the same thing. They shut down my shit. They're stalking my wife. They're harassing my family. My yeah, and, and, and you know what? You know what? You know what, John? Like, they want to keep going. They want to fuck with our Patreons, our Instagrams now. Like, yeah. Like, what do they think is going to happen eventually? Like, eventually, if they keep going, shit's going to get ugly for somebody. And Oh, yeah. Listen, yesterday, they made my mother's name account on Instagram with her address and the house picture. Like, you don't go fuck with my seven-year-old mother. Yeah, they made a, you, you know the post? They made a post for a fake account of me saying that my mom died. And they went and followed all the people that I follow. So people were messaging me, like, asking, like, oh, shit, is this real? So, like... Yeah, it's evil, listen, it's evil fucking shit, and they do it pretending they don't want anything to do with anything. They know exactly what's fucking going on. They support exactly. everything that's And, like, on. like if they keep this shit going, like, what's going to happen? Gonna get bad. Yeah. Like, what, what do you, like, like, how much can you provoke somebody before shit gets bad? And, guys, we don't talk about this on podcasts, we talk about this on Telegram, remember that. Sure, but, uh, but the last thing I'm going to say is, I think everybody knows that it's not going to end badly for me and John. You know who the pussies are. You know which side is going to end badly for it. Eric, it's not even just the pussies. I think that people who watch and see what's going on, and they see how Cassidy talks about things, and they see how Alex talks, and Bruno, and all the people he's associated with, you, you don't have to say much. You know who the pieces of shit are just by seeing how they act and seeing how they talk. And the same scene with explained this. Remember the video we did with Alex? Yeah, I talked about that. Like, the people are like, oh, he doesn't mention you. Well, he goddamn has tried to, but he can't, because there's nothing he can say. The feedback on his video was so bad, he had to remove it. And then he tried to put a second video on Yeah, I talked about that too. I fucking shut him down. And then Sammy had to message me, begging me to fucking take that shit down. Because you put up the video, which basically, if somebody actually really goes and listens to that conversation from beginning to end, it actually proves every single thing that's happened mm -hmm. throughout this whole thing. Yeah, and um, and also, like, this is the point I was going to bring up, Bask, uh, also to the move on people. Even if he did move on, which he didn't, because, you know, this is fucking with him now, too. But even if he did move on, like, let's say he really was this mature guy who was over this. Like, yeah, serial killers move on usually, too, before the families of their victims. You know, rapists, I'm sure Cassidy, when he raped those women, he moved on faster than his victims did, too. He's the aggressor here, so of course he's going to move on faster. If I go burn down somebody's house, I'm probably going to move yeah. on from it faster yeah. than the person whose house I burned down. Eric, my whole thing with that is, and I haven't gotten to discuss this, so I'm going to say something about it right now. My biggest thing was this, okay? So, like, when that whole shit went down, when you and him had a bad falling out, right? Yeah. He was mad, why? Because I told you what happened with those girls. Yeah. He's like, John, you're not a good friend because you told him, I'm like, listen, man, me, you, and Eric were supposed to be buddies. We're supposed to be partners. And I didn't feel like I couldn't have personal discussions with him 
on things that happened between all of us. And I did not know the situation was going to be, so it's not like I purposely went and told you anything. You know what I mean? Right. And he was mad at me for saying <coughs> what I said, but the thing is, I had a problem with Cassidy for doing those things, so that's why I came to you and discussed it with you. You know what I mean? So he, it, so when you guys had the falling out, he wanted me to make your videos saying it's not real, saying all this bullshit, basically lie for him, and I won't do it. I told him, listen, I ain't gonna lie to my own mother. So when he says I'm a liar, I, the only thing I ever said was three women, two of them, who were my friends, came to me and told me what he did to them. The other person that came to me was his ex-girlfriend, okay? They came to me and made those claims. I wasn't there in the rooms. I wasn't there uh, seeing the situation, right? They come to me and say, John, this happened. So by me saying yes, they came to me and just saying that that happened, how does that make me a fucking liar? Oh, uh, it doesn't, John. And, and I mean, also, like, people can see Cassidy the way he t talks to women about women. They can see he's a fucking creep. Creepy cock, you know? It's not that hard to believe. Guys, one thing, is it creepy cock with the U or O? U. Because I always say O. I don't know. <laughs> it's funny when you say it with an O, but it's with a U. <laughs> okay. I'll explain, so I'll explain why after we get Hey, by the way, sorry if I'm talking fucked up again. I smoked so much tonight. So no, I'm you're, you're, you're uh, adding a lot to this conversation. Yeah, you know, the thing is, people don't even know. Like, they don't even know the history of me, Cassidy, from back in the day when I was... Like, like they don't realize that they are fucking with us 24-7 behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, 100%. Just because they don't mention us, they don't mention us because they can't, number one. And, you know, they can't do anything in person, obviously, because they're fucking little bitches, so they just sit and well, try to troll us. But, but, Eric, they don't want to mention our fucking names. When this asshole, creepy fucker, goes on his live, right, and tries to, like have a fake persona because he can't he's too scared to be himself and he mentions us he can't mention our names he goes this person and that person you know why because he doesn't want people looking it up and seeing what exactly. the is going on but you know what let me ask you a question Eric can you concentrate on your career fully until you know that people fucking know who this piece of shit really is or not if I had my main channel back but if I had my main channel back this wouldn't even be happening so um everyone Fucking up. Yeah, but that's the thing. If I had my main channel back, what would be the first video I did? You already know. So. But Eric, you know what the thing is? It's like, okay, Danny Mullen dealt with that shit with that guy, right? Yeah. And the thing is, Danny Mullen, what he, what that guy claimed he did, it wasn't even fucking bad. And look at the heat he took because well, he wasn't deleting. The well, yeah, because he didn't delete the comments. But Cassidy's trying to run away from yes, this. He deleted everything. Do you understand that had he not deleted the comments, like literally, he wouldn't have a fan base right now? Of course. And he really, he really lost this shit. He fucking wasn't. I mean, fucking yeah, he's, 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 we're gonna talk about that more. We haven't touched on that yet, but yeah, he's fucking. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about this. Listen, two million views on this past month he's had this asshole. Okay, he is, like, when I was, when I was doing the videos with him two years ago, that was when he was at his peak. And it wasn't just because I was in the videos, it was because that was when he was the hottest, right? And then I started doing videos with him, so I and, came in and I mean, now, John, John, like, be real, because we, we say this to each other all the time, he should have never gotten those views to begin with. He sucks, he has no talent. Um, no, he has, no, I won't say those, no, he has talent. But Cassidy does have certain talents with certain things, right? Absolutely not, dude. Anybody, 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 anybody can do a fucking country or a Wangsta accent. I, I, I can't. Huh? I can't. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying. The problem is, he's such a piece of shit asshole, you don't ever want to give him credit for it. But this is the thing about Cassidy. He has talent, right? But he reached his ceiling. Okay? His potential is reached. He can't go further, and that's why he's having problems right now. Well, okay. I'm sorry, but doing the same video, just talking to people, like having a conver, like we're having a conver, John, 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 we're having a conversation, me and you right now, right? Yeah. Does this require any sort of talent, like opening your mouth and talking? Because that's all he does. Oh, that's all he does in his videos. So what? What's his talent? I'm just curious. Listen, he had talent in the videos he was doing, but the problem is, like I said, he's worn out. He's hit his ceiling as a potential wise, and he. You guys, listen, when you have 1.5 million subscribers, I'm sorry, you have to have a certain level of professionalism, but he doesn't have it, he doesn't have a, like, dude, the boxing match, it looked like a, it looked like a fucking most amateur thing ever, right? He wanted me 
to come and film it and do the production, right? I'm like, okay, we need to have the certain lights. We have to have lighting in the actual place, right? We need to have the... the oh, yeah. And, and he, he just flat out refused to spend money on it at all. Yeah, he refused to spend money. So, wait, so listen. So I said, lighting has to be done a certain way. You need to have mics. You need to have an announcer. You need to have the right fucking things after fight interviews. Like, it's got to be done the right way. We need cameras. We need all this shit, right? He, and I told him, hey... I, I'll, I'm willing to put in my time to do it for free, right? But you need to actually get certain things. I can't do everything myself. I need help. He didn't want to pay anything again. So and what, what happened is what people saw is because the motherfucker's too cheap. Yeah, and, and literally, John, like, this is the difference between me and Cassidy, too. Like, his mentality when filming videos is like, what's the least I can get away with and get this video done? Fucking sit down, Basque, or what are you? Stop waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, John. Yeah, stay like, like stay like that. This fucking asshole is here waving in my face when I'm trying to talk. <laughs> I'm trying to put the fucking camera angle because like. And now he's walking on the couch <laughs> like a fucking asshole. <laughs> okay, so John, listen. So the difference between me and Cassidy is his mentality with filming videos is like, what's the least I can get away with? How, what's the least amount of money I can spend? What's the least amount of time I can put into this just to get it out? Because you know why, Eric. Whereas with me, John, let me finish. It's how can I make this the best video possible? I don't care how much money I have to spend, how much time I have. It takes two weeks. Like, yes. you know? You know why? You know the reason why? I'll tell you right now why. Because you actually have a passion and a love for making the videos the same yeah. as I do, right? He only is coming and, pay and picking up a fucking paycheck. There's an expression in the real world, right, that they use in the business world, I mean, where you're coming and just taking your fucking check, but you're not actually working for it. Goddamn dips. Oh, yeah. Goddamn good American. Goddamn cheap. It's about the fucking money, and that's it. He, cha he changed, man. He changed. That's it. He had a passion for it in the beginning. But then he changed and all he cared about was the fucking No, money. Johnny, the, I don't think he ever had a passion for making videos. He had a passion for, like, showing people, like, proof, like... The attention and the money. Like, he just wanted to prove that he can be something to his stepdad, to whoever bullied him as a kid, you know, like, that's his whole mentality, like, you know? He, does, he doesn't actually care about making good content. Listen, it's a shame, dude, honest. You know, I had problems with him before I had met him because of girl stuff, okay? When I met him, we became friends, and I saw he had problems, like, I saw he had these things, right? But I, I actually liked him, I cared about him, so I was trying to help him to try to... And he was, he was doing well, dude. I'm telling you, he was doing well, but like I said, after he's off, like, when he's not... Because he would come for months at a time sometimes to Arizona. But then when he would go back, he would hang out with fucking all these people, Bruno and Alex, and all these pieces of shit. Oh, that, 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 that's another thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, that's one of the questions that Bask is going to ask me. But uh, If Cassidy is a real Christian, and then I'm going to talk about how well, he's a Christian because his wife is a Christian. Well, my soul just stuck right now. Yeah, so people ask, you know, do you think Cassidy is a Christian as a publicity stunt? He's trying to save face? No, no, no. He's a Christian because his wife is a Christian. If his wife was a Muslim, he would be a Muslim. If his wife told him to go jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, or if Bruno told him to go jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, he would. That's what he would do. Cassidy has no, like, no. What was the word you were saying before? Like, he, he has no identity of his own. He is whoever the person who he's around is. Listen, she even convinced him that he's cheating on her by watching fucking porn. That by watching and porn. Just, and justify her doing OnlyFans. Right. Like, what a fucking cuck. Like, literally. He believed it, too. Look, look, you're talking about getting brainwashed by someone, right? He believes he's cheating by watching fucking porn and jerking off. Right. And it, it's okay for her. She justified it. It's okay because she went on only fans, but she did that. Why? Because he was cheating on her. So he, she convinced him that it was cheating, that he's watching fucking porn. And yeah, he, he literally made a video saying that, that I was cheating yeah. on her by watching porn. Like, it, it, it's... Um... I don't know. I don't understand how he's not embarrassed by that. He just gives me Bask, more. He just gives me more material to work with. Bask, it's your girlfriend, and you know, we, uh, you know, when you date girls, most girls, like even my girlfriend, they don't like it when we watch porn. But I still tell them if they ask me. I'm not gonna hide it, right? But with your girlfriend, if she told you, "Oh, that's cheating on me," what would you say to her? We actually had that conversation recently. It's like you watch porn whenever you don't feel satisfied with sex, or you uh, don't have enough sex. Or you just yeah. got, or you got too tired of sex. You get me? Like you kind of got too tired of each other. You kind of have a, you want to have a break. Well, so well, you just John, go and watch John, porn. John, not you know? if you're like on trend and you need to fucking. Jerk I mean, off watching porn is not a bad thing. To be honest, you're not physically actually cheating on someone. You get me? Like, like it's your imagination. You know. Honestly, to me, it kept me 
me faithful. It kept me faithful in life to the girls I was with because of porn. Yeah, because like otherwise, if you if you decide not to watch porn and you decide yeah. to go cheat, you're well, actually physically cheating yeah, on your girlfriend exactly. or your wife. And that's well, even worse. Right, anyway, guys, we're getting off topic. Um, yeah, well, watching I'm porn not... is definitely cheating, uh, obviously. But um, according, <laughs> according to Brittany, and okay. Br Brittany is um, well, that's her choice, I guess. You know. <laughs> no, but listen, uh, John, you can confirm this. Like Cassidy is literally the reason we always have problems with him is because he's cool when he's around us. But then he goes and talks yeah. to Semi or to well. Yeah. By the way, I'm cool with Semi now, but whatever. But like he talks to Semi or to Bruno, they say, "Oh, Eric is bad." So now Eric is bad all of a sudden. He has like he can't form an opinion of his own. Literally, whatever the last person told him yeah, is. Semi's, Semi's always been a good person. That's the thing. Semi's a I mean, Semi and I had had issues, but you know, recently it seems like we're cool. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have an issue with Semi at all. He, he's. <laughs> he's got to he's got to be the way he's got to be with Cassidy all that. He puts up a little with a lot of shit, but it's also his business, so he's got kind of got no choice. Yeah, but uh, so like anyway, you get my point. Like yeah, whoever he's around, like I that just it's just fascinating to me, honestly. Like the whole problems with us the whole last year is because the shit that Alex told them, and literally like Alex started. Yeah. Like, what about Chester now being a proud white supremacist? Like, when did he become a white supremacist? Fucking Alex and Bruno. Yeah, because Alex and Bruno are fucking racist. They told him that that will be funny. And, like, I was laughing watching that, like, just how ridiculous it is. Like, how did he just become a white supremacist all of a sudden? Well, if you ever if you ever look, Bruno, Alex, and, Ka uh, and Bruno and Alex, especially any racist or uh, anti-Semitic or anything has to do with, like, racial things, the posts that they put on their stories... It always tag all three of them. You notice that, right? Yeah. It seems like Alex, especially, he always shares it, like, probably just to stay on Bruno's good side. Oh, uh, you, wait, you know, this is something important that people don't know about. Yeah. This is going to be good. Make sure you're recording this. Ready? Yeah, we're recording. Cassidy is so scared shitless of Bruno. Yeah. Because obviously, look what he does, right? He's relentless, right? He doesn't even like Bruno. So no, he doesn't like him. The reason why he kisses his ass, pretends to share his stuff, put him in all those videos, had him come down to those videos, is because he's so scared he's going to ruin his life and he doesn't have the balls to say anything. Because Cassidy can make it, if he was a real man, right? He would make a video right now saying, you know what? I know Bruno is doing this shit to them and all this stuff, but he won't ever do it. You know why? Because he's so scared of them ruining him. At the end of the day, Bruno only has this power over Cassidy because Cassidy lets him like who the fuck is Bruno is he the fucking mafia that we have to be fucking scared of him yeah like, he's, no, he's, dirty. he's like I said he's dirty and he's relentless and I don't understand it because like I don't know any guy who would de 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 devote his life to bothering and trolling and stalking people. listen uh, if Bruno is watching him I dare him to come to the USA again oh, oh yeah yeah stay with Cassidy the you know, I, let me tell you something. You were you were here uh, the the day that I figured out it was Bruno behind this again. Yeah, I went fucking nuts in the car with Megan in there, and I was like, because Megan met him. He came here like three months ago when she met him, and I and I was uh, this is the first time I met him, and I'm like, I was so mad at myself for not beating the fucking shit out of him and forgiving him while he's telling me his story two years ago. Yeah. Like, I nearly had a panic attack when I figured out, I figured out that moment that he's behind this shit again. Yeah. And I was mad at myself for forgiving him in person and not beating the fucking living shit out of him. You know, John, now he's gonna watch this and make uh, John the Jew accounts and make Photoshop your nose and Photoshop your face to make distorted like that well that's all he can do like who gives a shit like who the fuck does he think in he the is end, in the end we can't do anything as far as i don't know so i don't care about that kind of shit <laughs> honestly it's, it's not that this guy that he's fucking hiring hackers to fucking take down our instagram no i i agree and that's why if i ever see bruno he might not make it back to canada listen i i didn't talk about the legal shit that's going on but i'm telling you guys i am not I'm not going to talk about it right now, but he's not getting away with any of this shit. Not him, not Alex, not Cassidy. Mm -hmm. I will never film a fucking video again if I let these motherfuckers get away with things. Not going to fucking happen. Or yeah. my fucking dead body. Well, it's going to be over somebody's dead body, like, the way this is going. Because, like, people don't realize, like, like the level of, like, beef that this yeah, is. No this isn't some okay. Logan Paul KSI, like, fake bullshit. Like, this is, like, as real as a beef can fucking be. That's why the worst shit is when they're like, oh, when's the boxing match? Dude, this is not a fucking joke. Like, when's the fight to the death? 
<laughs> Cassidy, I'm the only one who's challenging you for like actual fight, like in in gloves, you know. Just like you know, like it's actually the best way to. You know? Yeah, but you're you're not smaller than him, so he's not gonna accept. I can fuck. I can lose some weight. I don't know. <laughs> you're not five foot five. Wait, wait, wait. You guys remember you said if I see Cassie, what would I do? First thing I do is I pull him by the three hairs he has left on his head. Then I slap him. What about the nose? The nose is already fucked up. It's already growing. Because oh, yeah. It's, he's lying every day, the asshole. We don't need to fuck with it anymore. So what would you do if you saw Alex? That's a tough one, man. He, I, honestly, the person that bothers me the most, even though Bruno's the biggest piece of shit, Cassidy's a piece of shit. Alex is the biggest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. That's the one who I want being taught a fucking lesson. I, I I'd rank him the third the third worst of the three, but he's still obviously my third most hated person. You know why? I'm telling you why because the motherfucker doesn't shut the fuck up. You, you know what's funny? He, he won't shut the fuck up on the phone or on the internet, but you show up to his house and he's quiet as a mouse. He's trying to act like he's not home. Yeah. He won't shut the fuck up, but when you go to him in person, he fucking nothing. Nah. You know what's so funny about that Barbie fucking comedy set on Kendall Doll? The first second he met me, maybe he is gay. Remember, I told you he's gay. Yeah. The first thing he said when he met me, he's like, "Oh man, John, you look like Ken the Barbie, a Barbie doll." That's the first thing he said to me when I met him in Austin when we filmed that video. I, I mean, I definitely see Alex being gay because, like, the way he gets offended at, um, at and I, I, this is nothing against gay people. I'm just like his hand movements and the way he gets offended yeah. over every little thing and has to argue it. Like, I'm sorry, like you're just you're fucking gay. He acts like uh, somebody who is gay. That's how he acts. Yeah. And you never see him with a fucking woman ever. Never. He always goes, oh, but look at this picture of when I was 15 years old. First of all, how do we even know that's not a fucking man? Because it looks like a man in the picture. So make sure you show that. Yeah, that, 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 that's, oh yeah, put the picture on the screen, best. You know, you know the picture with the Indian, right? With the Indian, yeah. Like, that's not something to brag about. Well, it's not something to brag about, number one. What if it was just a subway employee or something? And how do you even know if it's a fucking woman? Good question. And you never seen with the girl after it again? We never seen with the fucking woman. Oh my, but I mean, look at what he looks like. He, he needs the plastic sur surgery. There's all, but there's always somebody for someone. It doesn't matter you know, what somebody looks like. I mean, he had a fuck. Listen. It's, a, it's unfortunate that Cassidy seems like he's straight, because, you know. You know what's so fucked up about Alex? <laughs> the, lazy, the lazy asshole? If he at least cleaned himself up and looks clean, this looks so fucking dirty. You know what I mean? You don't have to be the best looking guy in the world. But to look clean. I mean, he, he doesn't realize how trashy he is. Like, Bro, you don't look clean whenever you don't have a girlfriend. That's a problem. No, but remember, like... No, but he's beyond. Like, he's just so disgusting. Like, he, he needs to clean himself up. No, but John, remember on the Chris Hansen podcast? Like, he like his beard and cut his hair right and wore nice clothes and just looked like a clean person. That would help him so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but he, he just doesn't... He legit does not realize, like, the trash that he is. Like... He, he doesn't see, like you know. Did you see what he did today on live? No, I didn't see. What he did? Oh God! What? He went into for two and a half hours. Okay. Uh, his his uh, I'm not gonna say. One of his ex friends sent me a link. They go, John, look what Alex is doing. I'm like, what? So I click it. I was at the gym. He's running into Targets and Walmart's nonstop for two hours and screaming in the middle of the place, pretending he's drunk and harassing the entire store until he gets kicked out. And he's thinking that he's saying, and then he's going to the roses and saying, like the you know the flower area in the yeah. store, and he's like, can I send these to the Philippines and like all kinds of racist shit. He's just telling jokes that he thinks it's funny that it's not. And he kept on doing it all night for two three hours in every store. And he does that. To, what's the purpose of that? To entertain the hundred people that he begs for money. He thinks it's comedy. So all the racist people watching him, or what? Like all, all the well, racist. Well, there's only people? like fifty people in those live streams, like. And they pay him money for that? They, they fucking donate. That's how he makes his money, just begging for donations. You know the funny part? Why him and Rami? You know, because I remember when it happened. I remember Cassidy telling me. You know what Alex's biggest problem with uh, Rami was? Well, that he bought a cheaper bulletproof vest than he said he was going to? You know, you know, that he was making more money on the donations on his lives than him. Oh, straight up Cassidy told you that? A hundred percent. Because he was mad that he was getting more money because they're like, oh, he's scaring people and he's keeping money. But in the, in the real thing was, yeah. they were mad. They were jealous because Rami's channel was doing better than Alex's at the time. So they were jealous of it. Yeah, and I literally so, witnessed Alex in person scheming on how to get Rami's channel removed from YouTube. And people want to say he's above, you know, fucking with our channels. 
Like he likes to say, well, if I could get anybody's channel get taken down, it would be Rami's. But let's be fucking real. At this point, like we're his biggest enemy. He's not Rami. Like it, it, it's escalated past his beef with Rami. Well, you know, on his live the other day, somebody asked him, they said, what did John ever do to you for you to always harass him now? Yeah. And he answered it. And he goes, oh, he didn't do anything to me, but uh, he accused Cassidy of rape. He didn't, didn't accuse Cassidy of rape, you know. The girls said he raped them. and <laughs> They came to me and made those claims. I never said anything. So, yeah, but that's what his reasoning is of attacking me and causing all these problems. I don't know why he saw Cassidy's ass, too, but that's a different... You don't even know, you don't know why? Because his clout. He, his what? Clout. Because the clout. He wanted but clout. What, what clout? He was getting more from our videos than from Cassidy's. Well, he doesn't understand that now Cassidy's shit's not doing well, so there's not really any clout for me. I, I don't think it's all about clout. Like, there has to be something deeper, because... Like, loyalty? <laughs> uh, well, Alex doesn't strike me as a particularly loyal person, but the thing is, like, nobody can tolerate Cassidy, no matter how much clout he brings you, even if he actually had clout to give, and wasn't barely cracking 100k views per video, so, yeah, I don't I don't know what this, Alex's obsession with him is, honestly. We're just better off not having those people. I wish we never had to deal with them to begin with. Yeah, the sad part is, like, people don't know, like, <sighs> when you were doing all those Predator videos together, like, you had no idea this motherfucker was hating you behind your back all that time, causing all those problems with Cassidy. Oh yeah, I actually like that. Like people have watched the Chet Goldstein video. I, they're like, "Oh, you backstabbed Alex." Like, bitch, I would never backstab anybody. I, you know, I'm the most loyal person you can fucking come across. Dude, you had no clue Alex didn't like you the whole time. Nope. I was talking about that earlier because he's like a little bitch. He would never say shit to my face. Uh, he's a little bitch. He's a little fucking bitch. But you know what? In the end, I always say, dude, I always say it. You do good in life, do good to people in life, good shit comes for you. You do bad shit, bad shit comes for you. And I know it's cliche in saying that, but all my life, that's always how it worked. Yeah, I mean, Alex has already lost his uh, YouTube, although he'll be fine just begging for money. He'll go on the fucking sidewalk and beg if he has to. Um, Cassidy's like, he hasn't gained any new subs since the beef started. His shit is dead, and the only reason it's not more dead is because enough people don't know about this. Like, once people find out, like, he's done. And it's like, was it really worth it in the end? Like, wouldn't we have all just been better off, like, focusing on our own shit instead of them yeah. having to go and start this? Yeah, they took it to a different fucking level. Like, but, yeah, but, but who, win, who wins in the end from this? That's what's hard. I, I've been thinking about that all day. Like, they just literally, they wanted this war, they got it now, but, it, you know, it's fucked everybody in the end. Yeah, and you know, it's crazy. It's like, this whole thing is so bad, right? But I always say to you, I'm surprised that people didn't pick up on the story at all. Oh, well, we should just say that, um, I don't know, Alex is a fake natty, and maybe... That will get people to talk about it. Remember I was telling you, Eric, people didn't, like, really care. Like, our Instagrams went down. You know, it was the fucking person who showed really cared the most? Bask. What? <laughs> that our shit went down. Yeah. He's saying you're the person who showed him that you care the most. Oh, is that what you're you said? The only yeah. person out of all the motherfuckers, Bask, that I've known on fucking YouTube, high name people, right? For years, I've been talking to him on Messenger. For years, not one of those motherfuckers tried to fucking help me or reach out to me. You're the only motherfucker who did, and I hardly know you. And I just like, yeah. Oh, actually, no. Leo did too. Yeah, Leo. Who's but, Leo? Uh, Leo. Leo and Longevity. Leo did. Hundred percent, Leo. So give him a fucking shout out because you know why? He fucking actually texted me when it happened. And all the motherfuckers that I know. High profile fucking people, not one of them fucking reached out or said a fucking thing or tried to share our shit. He actually won't even share our stuff. Besides you too, you Basque, you did too. Leo did. Yeah, and the thing about Basque is um, Alex was recently saying, uh, he said it somewhere, oh, you sent irrelevant Basque TV to call out Cassidy. I'm like, I never sent Basque. Like, you, you chose to make the call out. No, uh, yeah, yeah. I, and I Eric that, never, like, pressed me about, like, calling out Cassidy. It was, like, my decision just to back you up. And after that, that's when we really became close after that. Yeah. What a fucking mess, dude. How is it all gonna fucking end? I don't know. I'm hoping that the legal shit handles it all and we can just all go on and do our thing. Yeah, but I mean, there's no going on. Like, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, I'm fighting YouTube in court, but as of now, my channel is still down. So there's no just to move on. No, the, ever, all this, the situation, I mean, obviously the Instagram thing's a problem because we can't make an Instagram without them running their hackers on the shit again. 
Yeah. So that's why legally I have no choice to do what I'm going to do because yeah. without that, they're just going to try to take down until Instagram actually gets smarter and able to stop the fucking stupid a bot. Because I actually look into it and I see exactly how the bot works. I have the code in front of me now. Yeah. So I see exactly what it's doing. So idiotic Instagram and their fucking programmers, until they find this fucking loophole and find a way to avoid it, it's going to be a problem for us unless we handle the people who are doing it. John, what's the app or what's that website called where they uh, ordered bots for to take your Instagram down? What's the name of that? That's not a website where you could buy something. What that is is I'm not, I don't want to give too much in, uh, too much uh, information on it because I don't want other people doing it. Okay, but it's a script. They're not smart enough to run that script. I actually went over that script because don't forget I work for a software company. I went over it with one of the programmers. We looked at the entire code of the script itself. Okay. And they're definitely not smart enough to know how to run that script, but I know that they know a bunch of people who do that kind of shit. So basically what it is, it's a script that goes and reports your fucking every post you have on your page for every reason 30 times each few minutes. And it only could do 30 times because if not, then you, uh, Instagram sees that it's actually fake. So what they do is if you have a private, if your Instagram's private, they can't run it because if they just try to report your Instagram, it's never going to get taken down. But when you go and report each post, it can get taken down. So if you keep your shit private, you're safe. That's the thing with a private Instagram page, you can't really earn money. Yeah, that, that's... You can't earn money and also my shit's private now. I don't want to go and fucking look up each account to confirm it. It's creating a bigger headache for us, but that's what they want. And like, that's, you know... Of course. But like I said, that's why the only way to stop them until... Because we can't wait for Instagram to fix their shit, right? Because yeah. I don't give a fuck about starting a new Instagram, but I'm not going to want to deal with it get taken down, right? No, you do give a fuck, John, because all your old shit is on there. Of course you give a fuck. Well, my history of my stuff is the stuff that bothers me losing the history of my posts for all these years. See, that's the part that bothers me out of that entire thing. But I don't mind starting a new one if they can't take it down. But until Instagram, either Instagram fixes their shit, I'm not going to wait on that because who knows if they can ever fix it, to be honest with you. So stopping these three motherfuckers with whatever fucking method that I could possibly do has to be done. And it has to be. So people have to understand, we have to stop these motherfuckers because we can't continue our career. And again, it's not even just our career. It's not like, oh, you lost a job at Best Buy, so you go get a job at Target. Like, no, this is like, this is everything to us, so. John, you, you don't want to mention what type of legal actions you already took against them? I briefly talked about it. I mean, uh, if you don't want to mention, that's fine. No, 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 I could just say, basically, I have a case open with the FBI, and I have a case open on with, the, with obviously the Phoenix Police Department, and there was a case open on Bruno over two years ago, because he lived in Australia with the Australian government. I had to go back and fucking do all this shit over again on Bruno, because most of this stuff that's happening now, Bruno's behind, it. and until we stop him, we're not going to be at peace, because Alex and, and, and Cassidy aren't smart enough to do these things. But you don't they think support it. you don't Tell think them, yeah do this you know what I mean but they're not smart enough to do it Bruno is really the one who's behind this all but that's the thing like it's not that hard to go on the dark net these days from like a different laptop and then contact some hacker which i know a lot of people that can do this for a certain amount of money so you don't think cassidy could easily go on dark net through some like they could there's in the end there's no well, they, they, bask, they could but we also know exactly the style that bruno does his trolling and like yes yeah, so there's no way it's not bruno yeah the way that he makes his accounts the way he builds them the way he does his actions we just know him so well for years and all the shit he's in does to us that we know when it's it so how long do you think it's gonna take for cops and fbi i mean fbi doesn't work like that does it like don't you have to pay them first like for the private no, no, investigator no 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 no, no. The FBI, basically what happens is there's a whole department on cyber stalking and cyber security once you report something to them the field office in whatever state you're in contacts you gets all the information and it goes back and forth and then either they open the case or they don't. But even if they don't open a case to press charges against somebody, right? And I know this for a fact because it happened to me. They will contact that person with whatever means possible, whether it's going to their house or reaching them whatever way they can. Because they do come to the house because they've been to my door for doing nothing. They will tell the person, okay, that's fine. You want to deny doing all this stuff, right? But if we have to come back here or contact you again, you're not going to want that happening because then you're a big fucking shit. So at the least, that's going to happen to them. But I actually have 250 fucking pages of evidence against them. And I have actual evidence connecting them. Even Bruno admitted he was doing it. Back two years ago, right? Yes. They can't get away with it. And honestly, to me, 
and I forgave once before, I'm not going to forgive this time because this motherfucker you, deserves to be you, strong. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't, John, because, like, people don't realize, like, there, there's bigger channels, obviously, than us that probably have way more haters than we do. But to have, like, three people who literally dedicate their lives to, like, trying to fuck with you, like, that's pretty fucking rare. Like, <laughs> just our luck, I guess. And I forgot to, to close out what I was saying about Bruno two years ago. The reason why I didn't press charges against him then is because when I got the identification of his friend in Canada, along with his cousin, being involved in it and I sent it to those people and he knows who it was us he didn't want them going down okay because they disappear off the fucking internet once it happened he told me you know that he'll, he'll will cease doing anything he's done he's told the guys who were involved with it told me they're done personally so after that I was like you know what I talked to the uh, Australian uh, officials and I said you know Bruno agreed to not do it anymore and then I showed the correspondence between me and Bruno and then they closed it I regret now that I did that I know because I had enough to fuck him back then which is so funny how we talk about this Bruno like oh he's gonna stop like it's a 40 year old man who like can't control his fucking urge to make fake accounts he has four fucking kids imagine finding out that your dad does this in his spare time like it's That's fucking embarrassing <laughs> and he's, he's probably gonna find out eventually when they grow up <laughs> it's sad honestly and the sad part is when I had met him here he seemed like a nice guy in front of me and I honestly thought he was being genuine but he said he was sorry and he wouldn't yeah but John John, I, I wouldn't buy it if that was me, but... Well, yeah, now you wouldn't buy it. Forgiving, oh, no, I... Fuck I Bruno, dude. People, and I believe that people sometimes can change certain things, but certain things they never do. But I thought that definitely could fucking change. Hey, he sees the person I am. He knows I'm not fucking a uh, bad person or don't try to be a bad person, right? Why would he want to fuck with me for no reason? Why does he fuck? He because he's a troll. This is what he does for fun. Well, you know the reason why he fucked with me back then because he was jealous that I did the videos with Cassidy and Cassidy didn't put him in the videos. I don't think it's that deep. I think he just enjoys fucking with people online. Well, he does, but there was an issue, you remember, because he wasn't happy with Cassidy promoting me. There's always some issue he comes up with, yeah. but these aren't real issues. These, he just wants a reason to fuck with you. Hey, this is just his hobby, man. This is what it looks for, I guess. <laughs> Imagine that being your hobby. Peace death. Yeah. But you know what? It, when it affects your livelihood, I'm sorry. You're going to get yours now. What would you do, Bass? I want, I'm curious. What would you do? I would never take legal actions. I mean, people that know me. <laughs> Look, I, I, go a diff, I, I take a different path, I guess. I don't want to talk about this right now. <laughs> Because that's how I used to be, even four years ago. But I'm, I'm not going to bring it, bring up anything. anything. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that either. Because so, funny because huh? told, so if, if Bruno starts making fake accounts of you, so what are you going to do? I have, I have uh, really powerful people in my contact list. <laughs> To be honest, I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to brag about it, but I do have powerful people, and it's all about how much you pay, and then job gets done. <laughs> so just you can you can start fucking with me. That's fine. You can troll me and stuff, but it's not gonna end up good for anyone. And I'm not saying that because I want to brag about it. I'm saying that it's, it's the fact. Well, it's funny you say that, Bass, because. I told Cass, uh, told uh, Eric the other day on the phone, I go, listen, man, how's this, he goes, how is this all going to end? I go, listen, man, either they're getting fucked legally or they're not getting fucked legally. It's one or the other, but one of them has to happen. Yeah. In order for this to stop, correct? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I don't see how they see it going any other direction. Like, how do they yeah. see this just ending well? Like, do they really think that we're just going to disappear and stop social media? And they're just gonna move on like happily ever after. Like I'm just curious in their mindset. Yeah, how long is this podcast, man? You guys gonna have a lot of editing. <laughs> it's gonna be the longest podcast I've ever done, dude. <laughs> well, it's it's Bask Basket said it, so. Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking long one, man. I'm sorry. You basically interjected yourself into the podcast. It was supposed to be just a phone call. No, that's actually perfect that there's three of us on the phone, so I can put no, you in yeah, the title. I love it. It's a lot better that way. I think. Yeah, but I'm high, so I don't know what the <laughs> fuck I said. So, but when I hear it back, I'm like. Fuck, man, I talk too much. No, you, you said a lot of good shit. Hey, John, but the only thing I don't like about you when you're high is, like, if you weren't high right now, you'd be fucking going Mr. Wellington, like, just yelling into the phone. That's the fucking yeah, job people want to see. I talk more normal when I'm high. The reason is because it slows me down. Yeah, but I like hearing Mr. Wellington. <laughs> yeah, that's when I'm normal or I have caffeine in me. <laughs> and we are back, guys. <laughs> this is our host, Mass TV. <laughs> this is the host. <laughs> Fuck.
Yeah, that's the only way to get in on this couch because like there's a lot of stuff on the side. But uh, to wrap this up, I gotta ask you some questions. Ask me some questions. Yeah. What's up? So are you gonna sleep? Are you just as soon as we wrap this up? Are you just gonna go to sleep like over here? Or are you gonna move all the stuff? <laughs> I'm not even gonna move the, the table. Plan. I'm gonna fall asleep on this couch. Just like where you where you sitting right now. I'm gonna put my legs in there. But <laughs> then when you need to use the bathroom at night, are you gonna crawl under the table? Yeah, most likely. And my other question for you is, uh, why do you fight so much every time we film? It's not like I fight. <laughs> to be honest, guys, I've never seen somebody fight this much while filming tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I get in a lot of arguments with people. Well, like, he doesn't actually fight because nobody actually wants to fight him. But you start challenging everybody. You challenged the cop in LA last time, remember? You're like, put your gun down and let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, we never posted that video, but I did tell the cop in Los Angeles that because he told me to pretty much Oh, yeah, because uh, Basco's like going off and like the cop is like, um... Shut up, like you were yeah. And then Basco's like, what, I'm not allowed to voice my opinion? And he's like, yeah. And Basco's like, what? Put your gun down, pussy, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I mentioned about fucking LA protests back in the days, what, 2020, when fucking every looter in, in the town was fucking looting and stealing shit and cops didn't do shit. Yeah. So I mentioned that and he just shut the fuck up. Like, I remember when people were fucking looting stores, they were just standing around waiting for a fucking cold. Yeah, I remember, you should remember yesterday when you landed at the airport and I got the ticket for waiting for you. Yeah. I thought you were about to go fight the guy who gave you the ticket. <laughs> Which surprisingly, I came to the guy who wrote you a ticket. <laughs> I came to him and I'm like, bro, why did you give the ticket to my, my brother? You, know? you said brother? Yeah, I said brother. And I, he's like, well, because he was standing on the double lane when I told him to move, he instead so shut the fuck up taking a meter full lane. lap, he parked on the double lane where you're not supposed what to park. What the fuck is a double lane? Everybody at the airport is waiting there to pick you And up. his assistant was backing him. I'm like, yeah, 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 he, par he parked on the double lane like he... He wasn't really nice because he didn't roll the window down. And yeah, that's why I did ticket. It was 30 bucks, man. You know, why didn't you fight? I don't know, that, that guy was just funny yesterday, the security guard. I don't know why he got so angry. Actually, I thought you were just playing it up for the content, but you were like, actually... Should like, I put the clip in it? Yeah, put it in here. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go. They can't touch you, but I can. Go. Oh, yeah? Yeah, touch his name. Yeah. Go. No, let's go, guys. No, no, not here. Not here. No, guys. Let's, let's not do this here, please, guys. Let's go. Who else did you fight recently? No one. I'm pretty chill. I feel like every time we film. Every time you and I film, I still not fight, but that's a problem. That's why I don't want to film with you anymore. I'm, <laughs> I'm quitting! <laughs> no, when's your next fight? Tomorrow? <laughs> How many fights are you gonna get into tomorrow? Let's make a prediction. <laughs> and how about this? If you get into any fights tomorrow, we're gonna post them at the end of this. Uh, we can't post fights on YouTube. It has to go on Telegram. But no, but just the part where you like, like. So I'm throwing hands like. Well, like, nobody's actually gonna fight. Just the part where you start challenging them. You know. Let's fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I if I ever gonna like try to fight some MMA fighter or or boxer, you know, I'm not gonna pussy out. You know, I'm gonna have to get my ass beaten. That's what's gonna happen. And you know, I'm gonna say good job. You know, eventually if I'll be able to say anything. After the fight? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you were just telling me today about the hobo. About what? The hobo who you fought with? The homeless guy? He wasn't a homeless, he's a crackhead. Yeah, so Mask was telling me about how he fought this crackhead. And he's like, he he actually hit good. Yeah, yeah. so I was walking with my dog at 7 a.m. Next to my apartment building. My eyes are barely open because like it's 7 a.m. You know, I don't want to wake up that early, obviously. Yeah, like, like, Mask is like, man, what do they wake me up right now? Probably a good fight. <laughs> That's what my girl's girlfriend says all the time. She's like, you wake up and choose violence. I'm like, no, violence chooses me. <laughs> so yeah, so I go outside with my dog at 7 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m. It was 6.55 or something. <laughs> and I see this dude like throwing microwave, you know, at cars. Like a microwave? A microwave, like he fucking, like a, like a microwave. Like he throws on like windshield of like random cars, yeah. you know? In my, in my head, I'm like, that's LA, you know, welcome to LA. I mean, being here for four years, I'm already, I already know what's up. So I'm still like walking my dog and then I'm trying to go back in my building, you know, after like a couple of minutes. So this dude goes all the way around and runs at me with a fucking fist. Like he's running it and, and like, like saying something. Last video? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but I was actually like, you you don't expect at 7 a.m. somebody fucking throw <laughs> throw hands with you. So <laughs> I literally had like five seconds, you know, to tie the leash on something. I don't remember what it fucking was. Yeah, you had time to tie the leash. So this guy goes at me with a fucking fist and he throws a nice fucking punch. I'm not gonna lie. This guy <laughs> threw a fucking good punch. He missed it because I, I went like this, you know. <sighs> And then he keeps like yelling and he's like, bitch, come over here, like, bitch, come on, motherfucker, I'll fuck you up right now. So this guy actually gets in the boxing position, like good one, you know, not just like a, some random dude trying to, like this guy, you know, threw hands before. I had this fucking uh, zip jacket, you know, so I unzipped it. I already had a plan in my head how I'm gonna handle this. So my plan was, I'm gonna unzip my jacket with like my hoodie, you know. As soon as he starts fighting me, I'm gonna turn around and then make a couple steps forward, okay? Listen to my plan. So he starts throwing punches, he misses every one of them. And then I make a few steps back, but like I'm facing, I'm facing backwards towards him, right? So he, as soon as he starts chasing me, he's grabbing my, my hoodie, right? Yeah. And my hoodie is unzipped already. So I let the hoodie go. He's grabbing me, but he's actually grabbing the hoodie. And then he's losing his balance because I'm letting him grab my hoodie, right? Yeah. And then at that moment, I turn around, I grab him, I put him on the ground. It wasn't easy because I had with my fucking... It was a bare, bare feet. <laughs> it was nothing. Like, I didn't have any shoes or anything. There's some guy comes to us and he's like, I call the police, I call the police, I call the police. So I'm beating this guy up, I'm breaking his nose. He's fucking bleeding all over. That's <laughs> just so casual. Yeah, I'm like breaking his nose and I feel bad, you know, like <laughs> I'm breaking and bre like I'm, I'm, I'm punching, I'm punching and then eventually I see his nose is fucking like, like Cassidy's nose pretty much. <laughs> and uh, this guy is, is, is like literally staring at me without even fucking moving. This guy, I'm telling you, he had balls, bro. He wasn't mad. When people are mad, they don't feel pain. This guy felt zero pain and I, I grabbed his hands I tied them up like against the against the ground you know like I, I held them like this I'm like are you done are you done he's like get off me dude get off me dude and he's fucking uh, blood all over the mouth you know he's like get off me dude get off me dude <laughs> So that guy felt no pain, probably didn't even know what the fuck happened. I, I was literally holding him like this for 15 minutes, dude. My hands were like shaking at the end because like, how long can you hold somebody against the ground? I don't know, it was the longest. And then, that, that, fight. that was probably the longest I was holding somebody. And the, the elder dude, he came to me and he was holding his legs so he doesn't move. Because that guy was kicking me with his legs too. And uh, you know, I don't want, I didn't want to like beat the shit out of this dude. Like I knew he's on meth. Like what are you gonna do with meth addicts, you know? You ha you just have to hold him, you know? For a good 15, 20 minutes till the cops showed up and the cops showed up and they're like, What's going on here? <laughs> like you put that, that was the fun down. that was the funniest part. The cops showed up. What's going on here? It's like nothing's going on. Just dude fucking laying on another dude holding his fucking hands while the Older dude fucking holding his legs. Nothing's going on. I get up this dude. I'm not saying a word. I'm just telling the cop, I'm like, you talk to him, you know? This guy who I was holding, essentially, you know, he already put his hands like this, like he's ready for handcuffs, you know? So the cop puts the handcuffs on him. He's like, uh, so you, you took a little more meth than usual today, huh? And I'm like, so I guess they already met before. Mm. So I just kind of like go aside, you know? My dog was like, running around the entire time he didn't even come close to me my dog is fucking smart uh he was untied at that point so i grabbed my dog i'm just waiting you know what's up like cops come to me he's like you want to press charges i'm like i'm not gonna fucking press charges against a crackhead mm -hmm. if you don't want to press charges then we're gonna have to let him go i'm like yeah good you know but just letting you know like 20 minutes ago he was fucking breaking people's cars right there with a the fucking microwave and he's like oh don't worry the insurance is gonna take care of that in front of me in front of my fucking eyes he lets go of this fucking crackhead, uncuffs him and let him go. That's how LA works with this, guys. Welcome to fucking California. If you liked the video, guys, make sure you give me a thumbs up, leave the comments below. And uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel, which is gonna be in the pinned comment, of course. This video is dedicated to you, bro. People are gonna see you more than me in this video. Yeah, because you put a second camera on me. Yeah, the second camera on him. I'll be honest, man, uh, before those people met me, they were absolutely nobody. They had no subscribers. They struggled to get views. I mean, one of them was at like, it took him about 10 years to get 100,000 subs on his channel. And if that, he was getting like three to 5,000 views per video at best. And then the other guy, literally just every video is just a drama video. Can't get any views at all. Has to name drop people constantly, just crying on YouTube like a grown man. I mean, dude, like, <laughs> it's pretty funny, man. People still believe this garbage.